Um, so I imagine they're going in the military, and then we've got an herbalist who is adequate at herbalism and nothing else, but is a competent swords dwarf. So guess what? Urudim, uh, swordsman. You are going straight into the military because you're a competent swords dwarf and you're good at nothing else. I don't care about your personality or anything. So maybe both of you are potentially military recruits. A butcher. That's not a particularly useful skill. Also a competent... Okay, all right. I mean, I can also just use the haulers. Uh, a tw child, okay. I'm not particularly enthused by the child. That child's got a beard down to his... Okay, all right. Oh, did all you... They just brought a bloody load of children, but I guess children can haul. Um, so... We got a necromancer. In fact, all these dwarves look like they're competent swords users. So I should probably get a couple of swords made. Let me just check. Yeah, the magma's magma's reset, so we're about to go and get into the magma expansion game. But for the moment, I'm just going to spend some fuel. I have a spare. I have a spare metalsmith's forge, which has a high-quality weaponsmith associated with it. Because most of the time, I'm not producing weapons. Uh, and what I want to do is add a work order for steel uh, short swords. Let's produce six of those. We'll allow him to do other tasks because we're not in a rush, but and I don't want to forget to toggle him back. But um, yeah, that's interesting. And I think we have the apple wood blocks to finish this as soon as this gets chopped down. So you can see, nice little apple wood. Oh, we can't construct there. Resume that construction. Mate, I got some interesting shit in the caverns, and I'm just going to save your life by saying don't go there. Just don't just don't go there, bro. Um, so we should assign the uh, newcomers some quarters. I want the necromancer to be happy. I mean, where should we assign them rooms? I mean, it's a little bit of a further walk, but at the same time, these are probably nicer rooms. Because the furniture was created later on, so it's likely to be of a higher quality. So let's assign the herbalist, child, I'm going to build special quarters for the Necromancer. Because the Necromancer's mood is incredibly important. Yeah, I'm feeling like a special a special construction project for the for the Necro. Um where do we want to fit a special set of extra rooms? I mean, I could even build it out of some special material. But I also kind of want the necromancer supervised, you know? Like, I want people watching, making sure that... Let's repaint our hospital. Didn't realize that I had not marked it for expansion whole thing is a hospital. Uh, yeah, so a fancy room for the necromancer. Maybe this section here? What would that look like? It would be a sort of weird shape, wouldn't it? I don't feel like the weird shape would be aesthetically pleasing to our new super-powered um, entrance. Jeez, uh, okay, leave this with me. Alright, so I've put them in the one of the rooms that was previously assigned to the bookkeeper. 
Um, this does mean the bookkeeper will need a study. In fact, there's no reason, but there's no reason. Uh, there's no reason the bookkeeper can't keep the study. What we really just needed is the fancy room. So the bookkeeper is just going to sleep somewhere different to their um, their study. That's okay for the moment. Imperfect solution. We will build a better room that will solve the problem. We need some more noble quarters for when we get more nobles anyway. So this area out here is probably going to become noble quarters. But we should start plotting for the next expansion. So if that becomes one extra workshop, and then what do we do? Two more down here, perhaps? That might be the go. And have like this be like production row, with the, the smelters and the forges firing, firing all steam ahead. Uh, work orders are all good there, so what do you want to do now? Let's do steel... Uh, and let's do a good supply of steel helms. There we are. Just to have spares as we continue to increase the size of the military. And we'll need to dig that out. So that we can convey the magma down to this area. And then I'm convinced to, I probably want to smooth this bit out, to be honest. Just to make it a little bit nicer for the dwarves. At least the floor. There we are. Awesome. Uh, our new barracks should be operational. Let's just check in on them. Yeah, there we go. We've got one squad over there, one squad over here. And now they can sleep train, do everything they need in this area by themselves. They're satisfied... and blissful remembering that they're sleeping in a very good bedroom. I might even add a little booze stockpile. If I add uh, some tables and chairs and a booze and food stockpile, they may actually never leave, which would be kind of handy. Like, let's see if that works. If I build... A table here. I give it a chair. I add some stockpiles with food. Yeah, I'll play around with it, but may I might be able to set it up so that they eat, sleep, drink, like they do everything in one room, and therefore they're on duty most of the time. At least this squad is coming along. Adequate, it may be. What's the skill of the big guy? Expert discipline, expert fighter, adept axe, axe dwarf, adequate shield user, adequate dodger, still novice army user. Army user is a little bit of a drawback because it means that I can't equip them with the breastplates that I've been manufacturing. Um, but all good. We're up to 249,000 created wealth. I have a feeling a lot of that. Yeah, 47,000 of that is armor and garb. 47,000 architecture. Hmm. That's getting pretty high. As I plot how to use our new necromancer, and I am plotting how to use our new necromancer, I'm expanding a sort of curtain wall around our base. So this isn't going to start out as a like too tall overhang fortification. It's not a full wall to begin with. It's just going to be a curtain wall that slows down some threats, forces them to come through certain areas of approach. And the main idea here is that eventually I want to be able to forbid all items outside the wall and just do all my wood and fruit harvesting inside the bounds of the curtain and wall itself so that my dwarves have just a little bit longer to get inside if there is a threat and also so that there's fewer avenues for things like kobolds and goblins to come in from. It'll just reduce the risk. Um, a couple of times now you've seen I've been attacked and like spoiler once we fight elves they'll launch ambushes right where they send stealth parties out to pick people off. If everyone's inside a curtain wall and we're sort of sealed up except for when uh, caravans come through then they're less likely to get picked off and I'm more likely to be able to rely on things like once I expand this slow flow river into a serious 
river. I'm thinking of some serious re-engineering to make it considerably wider uh, and rapid flowing, quicker to fill, quicker to drain, all that sort of stuff. Uh, once we do that, um, we're much more able to rely on those defences because they won't instantly be picking off our dwarves and I won't thus be forced to se instantly send out the fortress um, defenders in order to deal with them. So that's the idea behind the curtain wall. I'm also expanding magma, pr um, the number of magma facilities I have. And then I'm thinking, once this area has drained, I need to build a little drowning chamber and we can start our first necromancy experiments because, you know, we're the good guys and industrialising necromancy just seems like something we should do. So because the steel production for the moment is going relatively well, I've decided to actually uh, get some uh, ceramics production going in this clay section up top, uh, which does mean, in terms of arrangement, that um, I need to build this little feature in the temple. What I'm doing is building a little magma containment zone because the magma for the magma kiln is going to have to be stored down here. But I've installed a little green window and I'm going to be putting more of these green glass windows around the fortress because, you know, glass is awesome in a lot of ways. It's high value, it's renewable. Um, so the people in the temple can walk by and see magma, you know, just if they want to see it in the wild, if they don't want to venture down to the lower levels. Uh, so we're just going to create a nice little pool of magma here for, you know, to entertain themselves. Why are you standing exactly where the glass window needs to be. Resume the construction. I need to wait for this guy to finish. <laughs> I need this guy to get out of the way. He's standing in exactly the square that I need to install that. Okay, all right, whatever. The kid who was having it uh, is frustrated, but um, there it is. So we'll set up a magma kiln up here, which will be a workshop, furnace, uh, magma kiln, and this will allow us to produce both porcelain out of kaolinite and also completely renewable earthenware out of the clay that we can find right here. So I'm thinking we might even set up, we can set up two kilns, just like with glass, you can set up a, a small number of kilns doing the collect clay job and then a kiln that is doing the actual production. Move, you bastard. Anyway, um, the trap water flow finally draining out. We're at level twos and threes. So once this finished draining out, uh, all my upgrades can commence. So far as uh, external security goes, the curtain wall is now in place. So what we'll do is we'll construct uh, another bridge like that. Uh, what do we want to do so far as that? Because this is the display bridge for people who are coming in, right? I mean, I could produce it out of platinum if I really wanted to style on people. Because we only need two material. Yeah, two material, solid platinum bridge. Done. Wood road, solid platinum bridge. We haven't gone so far as the solid platinum road all the way to the fortress yet. That would, in fact, be overkill. Uh, but for the moment, I think we're good here. I've noticed that drink and food are stable or slightly trending downwards, but that's okay. We have so much of it, um, and we can always bring in hundreds from caravans if need to. I just don't want to dedicate even more labor. I've already got a lot of planters and brewers and whatnot keeping the fortress going, so I kind of don't want to dedicate more labor than is necessary to that topic. One platinum bar. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a platinum bridge. Why not? Um, this is all driving the value creation of the fortress up, but that's kind of like we want to get rich. It does mean we'll attract more attacks, but I'm considering sending out some attacks of my own, because you see, I've got this squad of five dwarves, one of whom is a necromancer, so I could kind of send the A team off on a raid if I wanted to, so we can see... Oh! Okay. So we're not at war with this alien... Si Ah, not alien. <laughs> Elven. Elven civilization. Okay, this is interesting. I didn't notice this had happened. And this, okay, this explains so much about why my diplomacy has all been weird. So apparently some of these elves are at war with the other elves. So we are in an alliance with these elves and in a war against these elves. Okay. That's something. And then there are some goblins over here. 
Why can't I launch? I'm going to look at why I can't launch missions because I want to start sending out my troops to attack locations and to be a little bit more proactive. If trouble won't come to us, trouble I'm going to go to trouble, which will cause their retaliation. Um, yeah, weird. Okay, so we could click to raid. So we could send, it would take two days, we could send our dwarves to demand dark elven pits. And then what's down here? There's a goblin facility down here. I'm thinking we go beat up some goblins, but we can also, these 100 population sites, if we build up, Maybe a squad of like 10 steel armored dwarves would be able to do the job. Because they can't all be troops. Alright, let me let me set up a few things and we might send the A team out to uh to start by raiding some goblin locations. Wow, there's a 300 one over there. Wow, okay. Oh, and we've got some, so we're allied with our nearby humans and dwarves. Um, we are, this is our civilization over here, but what we really need to do is conquer these elven locations in here, these elven locations over there, and clear out the goblins too. And then once all that happens, we can betray the other elves. Or we can, or we can go to war, I don't know, it's, it's diplomacy, but the first thing we have to do is beat up these elves and these goblins. All right, so my dwarves are on their way. They're going to go uh, raid one of the goblin sites off to the north, um, and they're going to demand tribute. If that works, we might try and conquer some of the sites outright and link them to our fortress. Um, is there a reason not all of you are traveling? So hopefully the uh, the steel fist of our fortress is enough in order to convince the goblins to send us presents. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what they'll provide. When I last played Dwarf Fortress, that didn't exist as a mechanic. Hey, it's a platinum bridge. Uh, so at this point, I figure I wire up a, a trigger to close the outer wall. Diplomacy. Why did that diplomacy pop up and then go away? All right, well, my commander's on the way. The diplomacy button went away, so mine is not to reason why. Let me rig up some mechanical stuff. Good to see that draining out. And let's... Because that's the inner wall. That's the trap entry. So let's go machines, fluid, lever. Let's put a lever over here. As you can see, I'm stocking up on mechanisms for good reason. This is now an inn with some inn bedrooms, um, an area for the tavern keeper, some storage, um, some instruments, some drink stockpiles. Like, life is good. Uh, I am noticing that drink stockpile go down reasonably quickly, but also some of this is just going to be because stuff goes off. Rumors are spreading, that's okay. Okay, this this workshop this still is it doesn't have a dedicated brewer. I think that's okay for the moment. No, you. Oh, you want to entertain? Yeah, you can you can come and entertain visitors. Sure. I thought that was someone going to raid the caverns, and for once, it's a bard who's like, "Let me entertain the people in your fortress." And I'm like, happiness is always a problem. So sure. It's another reason why I'm installing more doors, more windows, things that dwarves will get happy thoughts looking at, like a high quality, exceptional green glass window. It's only 90, but you know, dwarves can get a happy feeling if they see it. Oh, good. Okay, resume the construction. Get that glass window in place. All right, fantastic. So now, I can 
add new route, stop, shove the cart that way, zero days after it arrives, uh, and go grab me a cart full of magma, and let's get this uh, let's get this clay production going, because irresponsible wealth generation is the way. It is the only way. It is the only way dwarves know. I'm also considering um, creating a sort of a civilian militia. So people who aren't trained in combat, but who have a little bit of armored protection at all times. Um, maybe a weapon. I'm considering giving a whole bunch of crossbows out to, to civilians, for example. Um, yeah. And even just giving, even just giving them like basic levels of protection. Like if I want to manufacture like a whole bunch of maybe leather cloaks, because um, leather has some protective value, or I could legitimately try and manufacture like, you know, 50 chainmail shirts or something like that if I if I get really out there. My steel industry is is making progress. Like I think at the moment I've got if I go to bars I got 26 bars of sil of of steel, 40 of platinum, 102. Okay, so you're making pig iron. You're making steel, more pig iron. You're making coal. You're just making steel, which is what you should be doing. Just make a bunch of steel bars. Um, I'm gonna have my weapon smith. I'm pretty sure if I look at stocks, I have started making a whole bunch of bronze crossbows. Is that weapons? Weapons. So I've got 10 steel battle axes, 7 steel swords, steel spears, 4 iron crossbows, 1 bronze crossbow. Alright. Do I have... I'm not sure if the metal actually matters... Oh, I don't have bronze, I have a whole bunch of copper. Maybe I do. I'm going to look at what metal is appropriate for crossbow, because I'm considering like a militia equipment. Never have them training, just have them do their civilian lives, but give them as a uniform, like a little bit of armoured protection, maybe a crossbow, a quiver, so that if, you know, disaster strikes, I can just have a whole bunch of civilians firing crossbow bolts. That, that seems like a terrible, thus wonderful idea. Um, I could give them more weapons, but then I'm just worried if they go on a tantrum, then they're all carrying weapons and they start chopping each other up. So that might not be a good idea. The answer is apparently copper crossbows is fine. So we're going to start with a humble 20 of those. Um, that'll cost some fuel because we're using this other metalsmith's forge, but this guy's a good metalsmith. Um, I'm not sure if you need a bowyer instead. No, that's just for wooden crossbows and... All right, who builds bolts? Who builds bolts? Is there a Fletcher? I'll have to look that up too, but let's make the crossbows first, and then as far as protection goes, we've got uh, armored protection being produced down here in the Magma Forge, which is good. Um, I might revise these work orders, though, to something like 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. So we always have some spare. And then, like, mass-producing, you know, some basic protection, even just chest protection. If, if dwarves are carrying armor, yes, that means the armor is going to decay over time, though. That's the cost. So maybe we go maybe we go low value and we go leather to start with. I mean, I don't have a really good leather worker to be honest. But there's no reason not to train one up. Is there anyone who's good? Vamok here is adequate. So Vamok here is going to start by making me a couple of things. Um, 20 leather shirts for the first for the first part of I'm not sure if this is a good bad idea. I've never never done this before. Um, 
20 leather trousers. Uh, no, you can't. Can you do cloak? You can do cloak. Um, and quiver. There we are. That's that's the militia kit right there. The one thing we are missing is ammunition. Um, let's just see. A bolts made here. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I do need another magma. Um, facility just to provide ammunition so but for the moment I'm thinking another it's either another glass facility but I'm not using both full time so let's task that again um, I've got four smelters going a fifth smelter would be kind of good um, as would another magma forge hmm what I don't want is a giant pile of magma in the floor that dwarves might fall into so I should probably find a solution to that are your workers not... I just get annoyed because these workers seem to never be here. But they are, they are getting through production. Anyway, I'm going to build a facility here, get the clay production going. And I'll be back, hopefully, when the uh, doors finish the mission. Did the doors finish the mission? Okay, my mission shows is done. You're going to combat training. Yeah, you guys are all in your room. What happened? Did you did you win, son? I have no idea whether they won or lost. All right, here we are. Mission report. In the midwinter, 103 attacked the... Uh, outmatched the goblins. Clashed with a single goblin. Our dog killed him. So one goblin defended the site, our dog killed him. Another goblin tried to defend, our dog killed him. An elf tried to defend the site, our dog... Okay. Uh, yeah? So did we just beat them up, but they're not sending us tribute? Do I need to go beat them up again? I'm sorry, I'm new to the mission system. I'm happy to beat them up again. I'm surprised that our dog murdered them all. Yeah, it looks like, looks like they refused, so maybe I need to go again. Maybe I sit, maybe I, maybe I go again. Now, mutual visibility is the go. We want dwarves to be able to see each other at all times. So if anyone is ever being criminal, uh, whatever. So we're going to put windows in a bunch of these apartments so that people can see each other. We'll replace the doors with glass as well, just to increase visibility yet further. But also dwarves really like these valuable things. And the more I can increase the quality of their bedrooms, the more happy thoughts they'll have on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I'm steadily going to upgrade all of the bedrooms in this way. Um, it, it'll increase fortress value, but should also help resolve some of the happiness problems that I'm having. These are mostly kids that are annoyed at being outside, but child labor is critical to my hauling business, so don't expect that to change in a hurry. Um, I could unforbid some of these minecarts, which I will do. 
I did that a while ago just to make sure that the correct minecarts were dragged down to certain stockpiles, but it's no longer necessary. So we'll we'll fix it like that. Uh, we may even expand the magma drowning area down below so that we produce more magma minecarts at the same time. We have our ceramic industry started up here. So this gentleman in the magma kiln, who had no skills, none of our people were good at doing clay um, and our furnace operators were all busy on metal so he's going to learn so he just picks up some clay and then he puts the clay in the magma kiln to make clay bricks clay bricks are a material that we can build uh, structures out of it's a nice way to start we can also get him to make like earthware crafts for trading which i might get him to do but i'm just getting some blocks to start with um, so that is now channeled out that is a gap so what we want to do now is remove that track stop build a new track stop to dump on that side uh, and then we'll get two, basically what we'll do is we'll have two magma kilns operating a clay collection area here and some stockpiles and that'll be a nice compact um, that'll be a nice compact location so there we are, earthenware bricks let's just make sure that this is um, earthenware, there you are so that we can dump them in this, this stockpile here and I'm not sure I have enough bins for them, so let's just make sure. I think my work order should be triggering. But I am just going to make an extra 20 wooden bins regardless. I'm also downstairs working on some expansions. You can see the mining to try and keep the iron industry going is uh, digging away. Let's, let's go dig out some of those extra ores. Just be careful not to breach any um, breach any caverns. We'll dig out the limonite and the jade. I didn't think I don't think we had any hits on uh, the kaolinite. Would be good if we want to do porcelain. You can see down here a more structured mining sort of expedition is digging out a whole bunch of flux flux stones. Uh, more flux stones. So much dolomite, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll need a lot of that. But let's dig out the hematite. And the tetrahedrite. And then down here, I think it's just... We chased some veins down here. We're not going to burn through all of our ore too quickly, but I do want to hunt down as much as possible. Uh, citrine. We'll dig, we'll dig out the milk quartz. And who knows what we'll find in the in the deeper levels. Um, these ones, however, these deeper levels we could potentially use for construction because there are no caverns here, so I don't want to vandalize the structures too much. Uh, but now I can always use building materials. I can dig out a wide area, build some support columns, and build structures out of valuable materials rather than just um, carving through walls. All right, so our dwarves raided uh, the elves. No, that's not the one. I want this one. So our dwarves headed out to one of the smaller elven parties. I don't think they got any tribute. I'm not sure if you can get tribute if you're at war with someone. Maybe we can just conquer the locations. Anyway, so they attack the location. Uh, one of our dogs, was the place was defended by 19 grizzly bears. The dog killed four grizzly bears. And then a different dog, Olon, uh, got killed by a grizzly bear. Um, and then a dog, Serol, got but not, not Geshud. Geshud just murdered the shit out of, like, four bears. Four grizzly bears v. one war dog. War dog wins. And it's because, I think, we had a brilliant tactical plan, which meant we had a big advantage. Then, uh, Silob the, and the rest of the squad clashed with 15 grizzly bears and s killed seven of them. And then they clashed with eight gri grizzly bears, killing seven. And then the dog... Geshud, who was a boss at the start, came in with the chair and put down the last grizzly bear. So, they won. I don't think we get anything. Um, I'm starting to think you can't demand tribute from locations that, you know, you're at war with. Um, but, hey, we, we, we did some serious damage. So, now I'm thinking, what if we try and conquer, conquer some, of these, some of these sites, right? Uh, and I'm wondering if we try and conquer it, and then I believe soldiers stay present, so what we might want to do is... I need to check, but I think you can attack a location and then bring the soldiers home, replace them with someone else. That's my hope. Um, 
So maybe we just add like a position eight to the rapid response team, and then that's the person who stays there, and that becomes our first holding, um, which would be kind of cool. Like uh, having a holding that is sworn to our forward. I've never done that before, so that seems like something that'd be cool. Um, I think that will attract a noble, like a like a legit noble, not like our like basic bitch mare noble that we just kind of elected ourselves. So we're probably gonna need some fancy smancy like stuff for them in order to make sure they're happy. And I should probably prepare a special noble bedroom for them, probably complete with optional drowning chamber if their policy decisions are terrible. Um, but the question is, where do we want to dig that? I mean, I could turn that into a noble bedroom. Limestone, malachite. I mean, maybe. We dug this out for its ore, which we now have, so maybe we can turn this into like a noble bedroom. Let, let's smooth it in any case. The other thing I could do is I could take, I could go to like the upper floor, like, wait, why is there a goblin in my fort? Alright, there's a goblin poet that's hanging around just telling me poetry. Um, Alright, cool. All right, and there's a book opening this door. That's that's a security hazard. Looks like we've got some elf poets, some elf dancers. I'm letting all these guests in to entertain. So as you can see, um, it's a bit of a party. Um, like, those elves are not wearing much. Um, so there is a... Man, do I have to take this off YouTube? Uh, there's a party going on in my inn. Uh, this, this axeman is listening to a story while holding on to a steel battle axe and a bronze shield. So we got... Like, this party and this party are very different, very, very different parties. Um, and they're going through so much booze. Like, you will not believe the amount of booze the people visiting my fort are going through. Anyway, I'm going to quickly check about what it takes to conquer a location. Uh, and then, in the meantime, let's, uh, let's set this with a magma cart. Shove off zero days, and that should dump the magma down there if we can construct a track stop which dumps to the right. Uh, let's let's make it out of talc blocks, which is what the previous one was made out of, and that'll give us a second tier level of magma, and then we can deconstruct all this track and fit our second uh, magma kiln in place. We're doing good. We're starting to stockpile earthenware bricks, which is kind of cool. Still got a hauling deficit, but that's okay. Uh, and let me go check on conquest options. All right, so what I've discovered is apparently if you take over a site, one of your people remains there. Um, one of your people remains there. Uh... I think we do all of this. I think we release other prisoners, take important treasures. Uh, let's, let's, nah, it's whatever. Well, those will be there when we take over the site. So we're going to free captives, take important treasures, loot other items. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to attack the site with our main squad repeatedly to wear down any defenders. And then I'm going to send one newbie uh, in this squad over here uh, who is in full steel and has, uh, I think, six war dogs with him since we now know that war dogs can, like, massacre... Since we now know war dogs can massacre um, grizzly bears, which is kind of insane. Uh, yeah, see, it, and those kills are counting. So th this rate, this is, this might be better than just leaving dwarves training. I mean, I'm not sure if they get full skills from it, but professional, professional. Competent. I'm, I'm thinking this whole raiding thing. I think being constantly at war, raiding and attacking goblins and elves, as opposed to waiting for them to come to us, might be better than just sitting at home training all the time. That might be a better way to do it. If anyone knows if there's a drawback to this, but I think the dwarves... I think we're slowly going to convert ourselves into, like, a war economy, where we sort of constantly send out troops and take what we can, give nothing back from the enemies of our civilization. And now that I have an elf civilization and two goblin civilizations that I'm at war with, 
well, the goblins down here have taken some human settlements. Um, yeah, maybe that's for the better. So we pillage stone, uh, stolen hustle, kill the defenders, and then we send out uh, this squad of one uh, to take over the location with his trusty war dogs. I, I don't see how this could go wrong. Yeah, I know the mission can't be altered now. I just wish I got better notifications of when it was done. Alright, so the raid happened... Confronted the gom uh, goblin, damsto, terror-soaked. Alright, so he was just he was just torn apart by chill or boulder dreams. Yeah, look, he was just he was just brutalized and we looted a bunch of treasure. Okay, so what I think can now happen is we send these guys to demand sender uh, and occupy. And we see if he and his war dogs are able to take over the hopefully now defenseless site. That's the hope anyway. Uh, I have no way of knowing like what like treasures we brought back. Hello, are you poets? Yeah, okay. There's uh, there's some there's some semi-naked and entirely naked poets back in the fort. Yep, whatever. Whatever keeps morale up. Get me more magma. Good clay progress though. Getting porcelain and earthenware bricks. Absolutely 100% still short on uh, hauling capacity, but that's okay. Um, and our guys are back. Nice. So now I just need to wait for a report on the conquest mission. All right, we've got a goblin ambush. Luckily, uh, the rapid response t squad, rather, is absolutely available. So let's give them a order on those five goblins. Let's just check if there are any others. Looks like we've got a sixth one that I may not have seen. There we are. Let's get... Uh, Second squad out there too, and let's ju let's just roll out maximum force. Show these goblins what's what. Are these human lashes almost also enemies? I think they might be. And it looks like we've rolled out with like 13 opponents. So this is actually more of a fair fight than we expected. We should still have much superior kit and whatever. Uh, and my defenses and scheme to bring everyone inside the fort is, as always, not quite ready. So we'll designate 12 targets. I like how the order is now kill various. Done. Uh, and let's roll the troops out, ladies and gentlemen. Because seriously, I had a plan that would be perfect for these sort of scenarios, and it's like, you know, we're ready by next season. I'm, I'm going to seal the outer entrances change the way the approach is handled and have a back entry for the dwarves using an artifact door that I manufactured because building destroyers can't knock down artifact doors, uh, which would force everyone through like trap corridor. Anyway, anyway, uh, even this entry here is in the process of being dug out and expanded. We're so close to being ready, but we're just going to do this the old fashioned way, call it a training exercise. All right, so here go the dwarves. A vile force of darkness has arrived. No shit. Oh, you mean in addition to the ambush. 
You mean in addition? Well, let's hope that steel armor and steel armor and skill really wins the day. I'm going to go turn the frame rate down to make this more manageable. All right, I've roughly halved the frames per second. Let's see how we go. Wow, it's still very fast. I've got dead goblins already, heavy bleeding goblins. Has entered, oh yes, Marshall Trance. This guy here. So he's currently in a Marshall Trance. My understanding is that means that he is temporarily like in like, he's in the zone. He is in the goblin murdering zone. So we'll, we'll let this play out and then we'll look at his combat log. Well, I think we're chopping the crap out of them. I love axes. Um, now, I believe there are more goblins that are here. So let's designate more goblins for murder. Because we don't just break this siege by killing the ambushes. We have to kill the... Um, we have to kill the newly arriving sieging troops as well. Kill 10 targets. Go for it. Chop to death. Oh, I love steel. Fire and steel. Beautiful. Material superiority. Are there any goblins left? And then we can check for wounds. I think we're good. I think we're good. So let's have a look at uh, Axe Recruit. All right, so this is his, this is his story. Hacks the goblin bowman in the left arm with his steel battle axe. Hacks them in the upper arm. Severs the upper arm. Shake him around. Punches him in the lower arm with his left hand, bruising bone. Pulls apart his right elbow with his bare hands. Hacks him in the... So sends him unconscious, and then while he's unconscious, um, hacks at his right arm. Oh, and there we are. Hacks the goblin spearman in the head, uh, severing the body parts. So that's usually lethal. Um, strikes a goblin bowman. Hacks the goblin bowman in the head. There's another head. There's another head cut off. There's a right arm. This is the thing about axes. They just sever so many limbs. Right foot. He leaves the martial trance at this point. He gets missed with an iron bolt. Severs a left arm. Latches onto a goblin, breaks a tears a tendon in the upper spine. There's some hand, there's some punching here going on. And then when, see when they're punching, that's fine. He bruises them, but then he, what he does is he brings the axe back online, severs the right hand, severs the lower body. Crushes the left ear. Severs the left upper leg. And there's a th I think that's a third head. I think that's a third... Um, I think that was three decapitations. Fourteen other kills. Two grizzly bears, 
uh, four, four male and eight female goblins. And of course, he killed the famous goblin uh, when he raided that other site. So I'm not sure if anyone is wounded after that. And I'm not sure if it's worth sending people out to like loot any of this goblin goblin stuff. Like for the most part, this just seems like cloth crap that's actually not worth the hauling. And we might just leave it out here. Oh! We've got corpses now. We've got corpses. And we have a necromancer. Well, well, join me next time on Dwarf Fortress.